Hi, this is Derek the Knitwit Strong, and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on loom knitting a basic scarf. This is done with the flat or square rectangle looms, and there are several types. You know, this is the one I'm going to be using today. If you remember in the last tutorial, I talked about the, the tips and how I like the flat ones, and I was talking about the pointed ones. This is what I'm talking about on the pointed ones, and I'll show you. But the way that they're set up, it catches the thread a lot of times. It makes it a little bit harder, so it slows down the process. But it's not, I mean, not a horrible thing. It's just not my preferred one. But they do come in different sizes. I bought these in a kit that came with um, all four of these looms. So you know, I can. There's different sizes. Like this would be great for making like you know a small, you know, like a lap blanket for like a baby or something or just different things. You don't obviously have to use the entire length of the loom, you know, you just use for whatever width you want. And, you know, they, they make them for, you know, the chunkier yarns. Again, this is the flat top style that I prefer. And they also make, you know, where you can adjust them how you want, where I can make a rectangle loom or I can open it out and have a longer flat loom. And they do make kits that are in multiple pieces so you can customize it exactly how you want. Again today, you know, I'll be working with this loom. And the thing with the flat looms is unlike the hat where we ended up using two strands, you can use two strands with this or you can go with just the the one strand, and I'm going to use the one strand at a time, and I will show you, you know, how to work it that way. I'll also, you know, give you an idea on what it's like when you're using two strands. It's just, instead of going back and forth on the loom, you'll just go one pass before you hook over. Again, I'm using my, my ink barrel as my tension rod. Just do a little slip, lot, slip knot with enough of the tail that you can weave in the end. This one has the anchor peg on the side, which I don't particularly like, so I won't be using it. I'll use the, the end peg. Uh, now, if I were to make, like, if I were making a loop, you know, on this, where I would go all the way around like I was making a hat, you know, then I wouldn't use that as an anchor peg. I'd use a side one. But since I'm just going to be going back and forth, then I'll use the end piece as an anchor peg. So I start off with let me adjust my camera and I'm sorry if this makes you seasick actually let me go ahead and pause this for just a moment okay I got a new tripod that I'm it's like a gooseneck tripod and I'm having issues with it so anyway so what you do here on this is you're just making a little zigzag and you make sure that you know you are looping around you don't go like that. You see where it doesn't make the circle around I'll completely loop around it. You go like this. And I have found it easier when I hold the pin barrel up at the top so I can kind of pinch the yarn a little bit so that it helps with my tension. But again, you know, you find what works for you. And you get all the way to here to when you have just the one loop left. Instead of looping like that, you go straight across the end. And then I am going back through. And your yarn is always going to follow the same pattern. I'll find sometimes that I'll... I'm trying to see if I can make myself mess up. Where I suddenly will be going opposite. You know, like I can see my yarn doesn't match. So, you know, it's a little bit easier to catch mistakes. So let me back up to here. Now, if I were using two threads instead of one or two pieces of yarn instead of one, and again, you get to that end, you just go straight across. But if I were using two strands of yarn instead of one, I would just load from here and start, you know, hooking my yarn over. But since I'm using the one piece, push all my yarn down. See, this is where it gets caught on the the top piece that I don't like. Okay. So then 
I just go back across. Again, at this last one here, we go straight instead of angle and go back through. All the way to the end. Again, straight across. I'm sorry if I'm making you seasick on the camera. And I put the anchor around this just to hold my yarn. So what you'll see is on this one, you'll see three strands at this point, but from here on out, you'll only see on two and this one, but the rest of them, you'll see four. And you'll do that whether or not you're seeing, you're using two strands of yarn or one. You're always going to want four loops on each peg, except this peg and this peg are generally only going to have two. This one, because we're starting, will have three. So you just get the yarn to stay on the anchor you take the bottom two on this one over the top and then the rest of them it's just like doing the hat you know the bottom ones over the top and I find that if I go all the way up this side and then go to this side it didn't stay over it helps with the tension just like going in the same circle you know going in order around the, the luminant hat now with this you're not going to see the ladder effect so you don't have to you know because you're not going in a circle you're just going back and forth you're not going to see that ladder effect so you don't have to worry about where you're starting each time Sometimes, like if you can see here, it's a little bit hard to see which is the top two and the bottom two, and it's just a matter of, I don't know if you can see, if you look in the side, there's the yellow, then the blue, then the peach color, then the teal. So. And then. Like I said, this is where I don't like these because it catches in that part, and so it makes it harder to push the the yarn down. Like I said, it's not a major thing. It's just not my favorite style. And it slows me down a little bit. But when I bought these in the kit, this was the only style that came in the kit with the multiples. And I don't loom knit scarves or with, I don't loom it as often as I used to, so having the, you know, I'm, I'm not likely to go out and buy another loom just to get the tip that I like, unless I happen to find some on sale or like at Goodwill. And I usually keep my nails, oh my cats are crackheads this morning, I usually keep my nails pretty short, but this is where having a little bit of a nail comes in because it's really good for catching the yarn and pulling it down. Max was super cuddly yesterday, all day. Kind of made me concerned that maybe he was not feeling well, but he's back to his normal hijinks today. Okay, so here's where the little bit of a difference would be if you are doing one strand versus two. So, if you're doing one or doing two strands, all you do is, you know, you, you weave the side and... When you get to this side, you would anchor it off because having two strands, you would already have your four strands on here. But since I'm doing one strand, there's only three, so take it back off my anchor. The only time you use the anchor is when you're at the end of weaving and you're going to use the hook. So since there's just one, I'm using one strand, I just go back across. And then I'm ready to, to hook, you know, these over and see like this one. 
like I said, you know, after you get past that first time we am um, weaving back and forth, this one will only have two strands, and then the diagonal one will only have two strands. The rest of them will have four. So if you're doing a using two strands at once, it's going to be a little bit quicker making the scarf just because you're going once, then hooking, and then back, and then hooking, as opposed to if you're using one strand, it's over there and back before you're hooking. It doesn't make, it's not going to make that big of a difference on the, the length of time, and the scarf is going to be just as thick whichever way you use. Now, if you wanted a really thin scarf, and you would use the one strand and just go once, and then hook, and then back, and then hook. And at that point, instead of having, you know, two strands on each, or four strands on each peg, you'd only have two. But it's real, you know, easy to, if you want to adjust the thickness of it, or the width of it, like I said, if I didn't want my scarf to be this wide, I would just adjust however many pegs I wanted. It, it's real easy on the looms to adjust, you know, to make things exact, you know, project how you want it to be. So this is, and at this point, I'm just going to be doing this over and over again until I get the scarf the length that I want it. So when I am ready to bind off, I'll check back in with you guys. Hi everyone, it's been a couple days and I am pretty much finished with my scarf. It is about 56 inches long. It's, you know, about medium length for a scarf. And so now I'm ready to do the bind off. So what we're looking at here is I finished a row. This is the, the bottom row and this was the top row. So what I'm doing is just pulling all of the loops from one side straight over to the other side. They want to give me trouble here. There. Hey, the new tripod is not working out the camera. I can tell the camera's bouncing a little bit, and I really hope it's not making you guys seasick. Okay. So now that I've got it over like that, I just flip the, you know, like you were doing, uh, flip the loops over like you were doing on the regular, the rows. on here. So you're going to start, so this is where, you know, opposite of where your yarn is. So what you'll do is you'll take the second from last peg, take the loops out off of it, and you're going to move it onto the last peg so that it looks, you know, like that. And then you'll flip this one over, just like that. Take this peg, this loop, move it over to that one. And then this, this loop over there. And then you'll flip the loop. And then you'll take, again, take this loop, move it to the empty peg. And the reason you're moving it over is, you know, obviously you're not going to be able to keep, you know, the yarn wouldn't stretch. And you would just keep having this gap that would get hard, you know, make the yarn tight and out of shape. So you're just moving that over. Oh, 
split my thread there. And there are different bind off techniques. Um, this is the average one, basic one I use on when I am making a scarf. Now, say if I were making like a head warmer or a headband, something where I wanted it to have a stretchy, you know, in, you know, there, um, like this is not going to be, you know, some stretch, but not a lot. But there are, uh, different bind off techniques that you can use that will give it more stretch. Now with the length of this scarf, I used the remainder of the two skeins that I had used when I made the hat and then about half of a new skein. So I think it would come out to a little over one skein, one, a little over one and a half skeins ish. Yeah, about one and a half skeins total for the scarf and then one skein maybe for the hat because I used a partial, you know, from two skeins because I used two skeins at once when I was making the hat. Okay, so now that you know you get to here then you're just this is the last one. I get the handy dandy scissors that hopefully I won't cut myself with. And just cut the yarn. Sorry about that. My phone alarm went off and it cut off the filming. So all I did at the end, little miss, she's trying to attack the tripod, is I just weaved in the yarn at the end of it. So now I have my scarf and it is ready to uh, get paired up with the uh, average length. And the, ready to get paired up with the hat and it's going in the donation pile. And I have actually found someone that their church is... Um, going out and handing out little gift baskets and hats and, and socks and things like that with the homeless. So I have found where I'm going to be, I'm just going to be taking, you know, my stash up to them to let them hand out with their things. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed my basic loom knitting scarf tutorial. And uh, if you make any scarves, I'd like to see, you know, photos of them. So, um, or just, you know, let me know what you're up to. And thanks for checking in with me. Have a great day.